everyone um, to the Huffington School District. Uh, this is a public hearing tonight, Thursday, June 3rd, 2021 at 515. We're at the Maple Street School. Um, so we are having this public hearing tonight uh, for the purpose of getting public input on the acceptance of unanticipated federal ESSER, uh, which is the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief to Funds. Um, so we have a list of the funds, and Mr. Chamberlain can take from here. Yeah. Sure, happy to. Um, so thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to have a public hearing. And this very well may be the first in a series of public hearings related to ESSER funds. So um, school districts, when they are uh, available to receive unanticipated funds in full transparency, we want to provide the opportunity to get feedback from the community on the use of these funds. Uh, so it's, it's a goal to have as transparent as possible, but also that if there is some committing to funds and with future costs, the community has a chance to weigh in. So tonight, this is the first stage in ESSER 2. These expenses um, were um, implemented in order to basically get back to continue safe operations, but with an emphasis on April 19th, coming back in and providing a safe environment for our school community. So just a little bit uh, about uh, ESSER funds. So we, the, the guidelines are to prevent a pandemic, prepare for a pandemic, or to respond to a pandemic. And so, like for example, um, because of the pandemic, we are going to video stream like we did last year graduation, and that is a response to keep everybody safe. We can't have everybody who'd like to attend the graduation at the Durgan Arena, so we'll have an alternate way to inform the community they can participate um, not dissimilar to other schools. Um, I think it was last meeting or two meetings ago, uh, Mr. Carroza spoke about an intervention. Um, we had a cost on it, we had to, uh, Michelle put it in ESSER, and that is, again, to respond to the pandemic to try to raise any literacy gap. Um, so we have desks to make sure we have social distancing, we have cleaning supplies, we have that's air purifiers, that's hand sanitizer, that's vital oxide. Um, outdoor eating picnic tables, I've had a chance to um, utilize the outdoor picnic tables. I've had lunch a couple of times out there, which is a wonderful thing. And if you drop by the high, middle high schools, you can see the outdoor tents, outdoors, you know, the outdoor eating areas, and they can use those for education as well. Um, we had to extend the lease on the tents for another week, um, so that's actually gone up a little bit more. Um, but that will, So this is about types of expenses with some specificity. So Michelle, through FY, can close the books on this fiscal year, and we will be all set there. Um, just a couple of things about where we are in the progression of federal funds. Um, we have allocated ESSER 1. That was about $40,000 earlier in the year. We had a second tranche of money that Michelle was incredibly um, diligent in utilizing with devices and things like that. Um, so out of ESSER 2, there is a total of $170,000, and we've allocated, with the increase of tents, about $71,000. So just under $100,000 remain in ESSER 2. Uh, and there's no, like, this doesn't have to be spent by <laughs> July 1. There, there's no expiration date like that on this. So uh, as the board has talked about the leadership team with Mr. Flynn, Mr. Flynn and the leadership team will take a look at that $100,000 and work um, in the next, either couple weeks or after July 1, to, to allocate those funds. And again, once those decisions are made, it would be very appropriate to have another public hearing. And then there's ESSER 3. ESSER 3 was uh, projected for the Hopkins School District to, to be around $400,000 on the grant management system. And Michelle and I will pay close attention to our meetings next week. We got about $250,000. Not sure if that is a readjustment or if that is just the first installment. But as Michelle connects with her um, colleagues, her peeps, and I do with mine, we'll be watching that carefully because there was an estimate that we provided and this is um, less than that estimate, but it may be until, for example, we get our back to school plan in place and they're sure that we're all in and things like that. There might be some conditions to the work that is done. So, but for sure, we have 170,000 in grant management system for ESSER 2, of which tonight we're going to allocate just above $70,000. That remains about 100000 and we have for sure the grant management system allocated already for the Hopkins School District, 250000 and we'll watch to see if that's an installment or if that is a revised number down from where we were earlier informed of an estimate. Um, so the, what the public hearing does, it allows opportunity uh, for, the, for the public to weigh in in full transparency, and it will allow Michelle 
we'll submit the grant, the money will come in, and that will be all balanced by the time we close the books on this fiscal year. And as you can read these, it is respond, prevent, prepare, and respond. Right, Michelle? Those are the three right. terms. And Michelle and I are in agreement about the appropriateness of the use. And I think Michelle works with the state just about on every significant purchase, right? You get mm -hmm. So uh, these have been uh, supported by the DOE, and they've approved these as well. Are there any questions? So the answer two is basically to reconcile everything Michelle's purchased, basically so close to the, the year out. That makes sense. You got it. Real quickly, answer three, what that can be used for in the future real quick? So Same types of thing. It's, okay. it's, it's to prevent, respond, or prepare. Um, it could be look at learning gaps. It okay. could be looked at um, other, um, you know, other facility projects, as Michelle and I have spoken about. If it's a significant facility project, there are some federal requirements to use the Davis-Bacon approach okay. because it's federal money. So all that would go into the mix. Leadership team, we probably had three or four discussions about these funds and um, eagerly, I know they're uh, eager to work with Mr. Flynn and talk about his ideas, their ideas, as the team gets together, we'll make recommendations down the road. And it's 2022, the expiration on them? I'm sorry? 2022 is when they expire? No. SO2 is 2022. SR3 is 2023. Yep. Okay. Cool. Right, cool. So okay. over a year for the first one. Perfect. Over two years for the second one. All you right. with me? Yep. Well, I'm with you. Cool beans? Any other questions? This is really good. This is great. And I thank you for the public hearing. I appreciate the patience. This, if you, I actually saw it in the paper. I did see it in the paper, which is always fun. I get to show Jesse this is what we're doing. And uh, so I think we're in good shape. Great. All right. If there are no more questions, I think we can go ahead and close out this public hearing. No, just for the record, we have no one here. Yes, we, we, we have, have nobody here. If there was anyone here, they would be welcome to public comment, <laughs> but it's just us. Yeah. And I was, uh, it's, I was off, it's September 23 for the first one for ESSER 2, September 24 for ESSER 3. Uh, so we've got even more time. Thank you. Great, and there should be. Matt, what are you doing, so pausing the screen? It's up to you, we're glad to continue or I can just Wait, there eight, should be, there was a public hearing for SF1, right? Might so there's for now. the use of funds out. So, um, we had one for SF1 already, I believe. No, I know, but that's on the site, right? The Whatever the posting yeah. was? We okay. had a post for that, yeah. Right. Esther one's been posted already. We had a public hearing for that one. Yeah. yeah. Esther two, this is the second one, and there's a balance of 170. Oh, well, 100,000 left in there. Yeah. That expires in 2022, which Mr. Flynn will work with. <laughs> And SR3 is 250 in it, which expires 2023. Yep. Perfect. Matt, you can, I think we can pause it and we'll reconvene in five minutes. Yeah. Or seven minutes.
All right. So welcome, everyone, to um, the Thursday, June 3rd meeting of the Hopkinton School Board. We have almost a full board tonight. We have Dulce Lapoma, uh, Rob Nato, Norm Goopel, and then we've got Mia Richter and Juliet Shahadi, and I'm Andrea Folsom. Jim O'Brien is out of town, out of pocket, unable to join us tonight. Um, so let's get down to business. So first up, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. And, oh, I didn't introduce you guys, too. But we're all here. <laughs> Uh, all right, Steve, are there any additions or deletions from the agenda this evening? There is. So there is an action item related to this uh, speech the language pathologist position that has been added. And I think we also, in speaking with Michelle, I think we just need to add an action item so that the board accepts the, the federal funds and oh. expends them as discussed in the public okay. hearing. All right. And um, I'll, during the meeting, I'll write up some notes, but you'll be fine. But that's, right. we just have to accept the funds yep. and expend them as recommended. That's the public hearing. Right, Michelle? That'll get Correct. it done. So sorry about that. Oh, no, no so, problem. Uh, so it's Laura Bailey action item and then the public hearing follow-up. All right. And any correspondence? So there was a, a, a couple of correspondence that I uh, placed in the folder. And I also want to draw attention to two documents from the New Hampshire School Boards Association. One of which is I put in, and the count is a little bit off this year. So usually the school boards association resolution meeting is in the spring, but it's going to go in the fall. And so as you, re as you review the resolutions, the resolutions are an important document because that guides NHSBA, the school boards association advocacy. So if the board wanted to advocate for a position that is different than the resolutions, you would go to make an amendment and then they would advocate that position. So that's, it's, a, it's a very unique process. But I just wanted to bring that attention because there are times that people wonder why the school boards association advocates the certain way that it does. And it's all based on the general meeting of all school board. You, you would vote, if, if you were interested, you would vote and send Norm to the resolution meeting to vote in this way. And so that's one piece. And the other piece is I just highlighted that the school boards association is monitoring the ability to have remote meetings that may in fact be time sensitive if the emergency order um, runs out. I just want to be aware that the board, and very much appreciatively, has had a couple of additional meetings remotely, perfectly authorized by the emergency order, but that is potentially, that ability is winding down. I just want to make sure that was there. So I put those two documents from the School Boards Association in the board. Great. Cool beans? All right. All right, and so we have, looks like, four sets of min minutes to approve tonight. Um, so, do I have a motion for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the minutes of the additional school board meeting held on May 17th, 2021? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, ayes carry it. Do we have a uh, recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the minutes of the regular school board meeting held on May 20th, 2021? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. We have a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the minutes of the non-public session of the May 20, 2021 school board meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And we have a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the minutes of the additional school board meeting held on May 28, 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and with that, uh, we have come to our first public comment uh, moment of the night. As a reminder, public comment can also be submitted up to 5 p.m. on the day of the meeting by sending comments to sbpublickcomment at saau66.org. You will need to include your name and address in the email. So, would anyone here like to speak tonight? No. <laughs> All right, we did have... Um, one public comment uh, written into us from Amanda Gilman of West Ridge Circle um, requesting the uh, information from the public, or the, I'm sorry, the PD day, 
that the teachers had on Friday with Dr. Dottie Morris from Keene State College. Um, and she wanted that information to be provided to the school board members as well. Um, and we did receive that information and had a chance to look it over. Um, and all looked, all looked good. Um, so that's that. All right, so if there's, if there's any other public comment, now's your chance. Perfect time. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. And you can please just say your name and address. Thank you. Hi, Trisha Lambert, uh, 305 Galloping Hill Road. I'm here to talk about masks again. I'm sure you all knew that. So um, I just want to bring your attention in case you haven't seen it, but Dr. Fauci has 3,200 emails that we're going through that relates to masks. And there's information in there from his own mouth that masks do not work. I would hope that people go and look at it. There's also some other interesting information in there. Um, they were playing bracketology with our health, and you'll be able to see that as well. And that was with the CDC's uh, chief medical director. These are the people you're following, okay? These are the people you're following, and you're putting masks in our kids' faces. I know you're gonna talk about it today, so I'll give you all the opportunity. Um, I know Dr. Chan put out new information. Um, you're simply following. I would still like a metric that masks work, I'm asking that from the board, what's the metric? And is there exact science or any justification, um, specific justification for the lab that masks work? I'd like to see it. Nobody's provided it to me yet. So, sorry, I kinda got caught off guard right now. But anyway, I'm still looking for that metric and I would like to know when the masks are gonna come off. If we're simply following Dr. Chan, I don't know that that's acceptable because we all have brains and we can all know that 99.986% of this, of this virus is recoverable. It's recoverable. It's like the flu. Why did he not wear masks with the flu? No one seems to want to answer that. But anyway, I really encourage you to go look. There's a lot of nice emails in there, but there's also a lot of very damning evidence that you're going to see that these people are playing with our lives and our children's lives who are breathing through masks at 92 degrees last Wednesday. It's hot today. My daughter, I'm going to tell you right now, has seen two doctors for her face. It's a mask injury. I'd like to know where to send the bill. It's your mandate. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Shahadi, 280 Rollins Road, Thank you. and I would argue that there is abundant, compelling evidence that masks work, and if you look at the states where COVID is spiking hugely, it's often in places where people aren't wearing masks. I guess from personal experience, as a physician, the patients of mine who have been hospitalized with COVID and come down with COVID, when I ask them, it's been in a situation where they're not wearing a mask. In my personal experience, I have not known anyone who was following proper social distancing and masking protocols, who has come down with COVID. Um, and so I think for an individual and a collective community standpoint, that masking is appropriate indoors. I think that outdoors is a completely different situation. I think that you have different airflow patterns and, and I think that the 
evidence suggests that outside the risk of transmission is very low, but I think there's a big difference between indoors with questionable ventilation systems versus outdoors. But from my personal experience, anecdotally, masks, masks work. All right. Is, now with that, we will close public comments. Could you, I really quickly say something to um, yes, I'm this is perfect because it's comments from the board. So, Julie, <laughs> you get to be the first one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm a kid as well who wears a mask in school, and my sister is in the lower grade, and she does. Um, and it's not that much of a nuisance. It's especially, I think, that the small cost, um, the benefit outweighs that. Um, and just talking with my friends who are high schoolers who are, you know, seeing lots of people, everybody I know that has gotten COVID has been in in large groups of people without a mask. And I think that with people getting vaccinated, sure, in a couple months it might be a different story, but especially with little kids where they aren't yet, I think that if you just take off masks, you're gonna see a very big spread, the same way you'd see a big spread if before vaccinations, high schoolers got together at a party inside or something like that. Um, and I definitely think that if vaccinations are you know, um, more widespread and we have herd immunity that it's a different story, but as of right now, I think you can find evidence just by asking people around you or, you know, looking at who's gotten COVID. Um, so that's sort of my take on it. Great, thank you. Are there other comments from the board this evening? Who wants to go first? I have a real quick comment. Uh, last week I got an opportunity to go to New London Historical with the fourth graders Ooh. and talk about bees um, and had a great time. The kids were awesome. It was really just a super fun day. Uh, last night my wife came home with some thank you notes from kids and that was really fun to read this morning over coffee. So appreciate the fourth graders inviting me and putting up with my bee in. I'll go. I'm ready. You ready, you guys? Yeah. So let me let me start. You know, being on the being on the board, probably the most exciting thing for me is being able to see the award ceremonies for our students. And it was just a great experience last week, being able to see the lower you know, the lower the kids from our up to eleventh grade and then the senior night was just amazing. And I think this board, you know, should definitely recognize our student reps. They just crushed it that night. I am a little disappointed that both of you did not sit closer to the front. You were like in the way back. <coughs> it would have made it a little bit easier for walking up, but uh, Juliet, you did amazing with what you received that night, and I just know the success is gonna to continue to grow into your senior year, and I, and I can't wait to see that. And you're gonna crush it. But Mia, I did not know you were valedictorian, and I think that's just an absolutely <laughs> great congratulations on <laughs> Absolutely. If you need help with a speech, I'm your guy. You know me, I love to talk. No, but seriously, don't laugh. No, but seriously, congratulations. It's, it's really great considering what's happened in the last uh, uh, school year. And last thing, you know, it, it was also great to the teachers the other day with their ceremony. Steve did a great job emceeing it. I did lose 20 bucks, Steve. You started to cry at four. So there was an over and under, but the Steve, the Steve uh, farewell tour has started a little bit. And it's just been a great humbling experience. A lot of people have been showing a lot of outpour support. And to be there to see Steve talk about old memories and sharing reflections and his community members just thanking him, it's just been a great thing to see. Last thing, I, I'm keeping this under two, two minutes. Um, good luck with the prom this weekend. I hope all our students enjoy it, have fun, be safe. It takes a lot of photos. I always like seeing. This is going to be my first prom, not mine, but my son's. And uh, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really excited because a lot of these students have something to smile about. Just all be safe and, and have a great time. Chelsea, do you have anything? Um, should I talk about it? Sure. Okay. Um, the only thing that I would like to mention is that next. Oh my God, I'm going to get emotional about this. Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday there is a hold on Steve Chamberlain's calendar from 3.30 to 6 um, because there will be, <laughs> oh my God, a community celebration for everything he's done. So it's at the Kimball Cabins um, on Main Street in Hopkinton and if everyone can attend that would be great. Parking at Harold Martin, overflow at St. Andrews. Uh, refreshments will be provided. Um, come on, come on. Awesome.
today at our meeting, and we'll just start off with Matt, uh, Director of Technology. Matt, thank you for your submission, and if there are any questions or if there are any highlights, but I just really appreciate all that you've done. Actually, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate Andrea and Jim's words at the ceremony yesterday. I think I found it uh, tremendously difficult to reflect on this year and come to any sort of real conclusion about it yet. I don't think I've quite found the Zen place <laughs> in reflecting on this year. But it certainly, I think the launch of this year was flexibility because we all had to have it from parents to students, board members to administrators and certainly teachers. So I just really wanted to appreciate all of their flexibility. I certainly hope to help support them as best we can. I'm happy to take your questions. Okay, any questions about Max? Just have a quick comment about, you know, we talked about the one-to-one, -one, which I think is fantastic, and that, you know, going forward, everything that you're doing to make sure that kids are accountable for their their uh, Chromebook that they got, and we're going to sustain this, that's going to be the key piece, you know, that, that people are recognizing the significance of that, and we're holding kids accountable, and they're taking responsibility. So thanks for making that part of the plan, yes. a big part of the plan. Thanks. Certainly. Thank you, Matt. Any other questions? Yeah. No. I just want to appreciate all the work that you do in the summer. I, I often forget that you guys do all the things in the summer and update everything. And um, I think this year we really saw how important technology is. Um, and thank you for your flexibility as well, because you guys had to do a lot of changing on the fly and dealing with frustrated people when computers didn't come in the months. So, thank you. It's been an interesting set of challenges, but I think we could all say that about the last 15 months, for sure. Great. Great. Oh. Can I ask you more questions? Go. One is around, so I'm guessing you're tracking this, but over the course of the next year, since we purchased so many Chromebooks, can you just keep an eye on, like, 
depreciation is not the right word, but like the retirement rate, I guess, I guess basically, because it'll be interesting to see, like, we have a five year or seven year depreciation, what that actually looks like over the actual usage of kids responsibly using Chromebooks. It's actually been surprisingly good so far. Right. I was um, quite concerned when we sat on Chromebooks last March yep. because it was just done so hastily based on the need. Yep. Um, and I was expecting perhaps, you know, by the middle of this year that we might have 10% um, yep. losses, but I think it's more around 3 or 4%. Yep. So definitely in the range of what we'd expect. Yep. So, yeah, but we'll certainly try that going forward. Well. Did we implement the buyback option here, or is that not in the cards yet? I know me and Rob talked about it. Buy we have it. Yeah, that wasn't part of this rollout. It was, it was uh, maybe the future. Maybe. Okay. Cool. And then my only other comment, which is not actual like hardware technology, but in terms of like traffic to the site, do you have any like um, anecdotal numbers about traffic or usage of materials on the HopkinsSchools.org site, or? Do you, I haven't do you, looked in a while. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we do have. Yeah. So I can definitely take a look and see where we are and how that changes over time. Yeah, it'd just be interesting to see where people are going and, you know, what that looks like. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Up next, and what a pleasure, because it's not often we're in person. I have uh, one of the highlights for me this year in the positive is working with Andy. Incredibly collaborative, insightful, caring. Mandy, I just appreciate the opportunity. I'm glad you're here in person, and it's a privilege to work with you. Just thank you for your contribution. It's not the easiest onboarding through a pandemic, but I think she, I think really she really has connected to the meaning of our school. So, Mandy, thank you. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. I think I see somebody sitting here. Can you say this? And I'm sure other people are too. You're going to move and change districts in a pandemic. This is a great place to land. Um, the team has been fantastic, and I think you'll see in the accomplishments that I wrote. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing is really just applauding what's already here. I didn't create people that were good collaborators or, or anything like that. Those are already here, and I am so thankful for them because without it, it would have been an even more interesting year, <laughs> I think. And, and I'm so grateful for the team that I get to work with each day. Um, and we are. We're just really working on beefing up, for lack of a better phrase, the foundation that's already here. So from that foundation, we can continue to build up and bring new things in. And, and, and check things, and, and really for me, it's gonna be about just continuity across schools, so each school is doing the same thing with the same paperwork, with the details in between those frameworks being different because they have to be a different population. Um, and just really working on that, and that's something that, that we're excited about, we already started that work um, in a couple of different areas, so um, we're really looking, we're looking at the RTI frameworks, the 504, the IEP, all those things, um, and we have a great group of staff coming in, it's a diverse group of staff, it's not just special education staff, it's you know, the counselors are coming in, the reading specialists are coming in, it's wonderful. And their, their input is just phenomenal because there's some pieces that I don't know about. I don't know, I don't know all the ins and outs of RTI because it's not my bag to hold all the time, but it's important that I really understand it deeply so we can just continue to build on it. And because at the end of the day, you know, there is that impact on the special ed side of things as well. So it's really just been a fantastic year to just get to know Hopkinton and get to know the people within it. Um, I think I said to my husband that just a couple of months ago, I was like, you know, it finally feels like it's my position. And that to me was just like this, uh, those relationships that I wanted to build. I probably could have built them a lot faster if it wasn't COVID year. Um, but it just it just felt so good. felt good to get there and be able to recognize that. And I'm just excited to be able to see where it's going to go from here. So. Okay, are there any questions, comments? Yeah, I Go for it. Hi. <laughs> So this is awesome, Mandy. I thought that your note was incredibly informative and um, beneficial. And the defining frameworks piece is just seems like a huge behemoth of work. So um, as you think about these changes with RTI, 504s, um, IEPs, and then sort of like the like determination ranges, how do you think about the timeline for all of that? Or what does that process look like as you think about the next year or two years? <laughs> Well, Three years. first, we're really going to focus on RTI, yeah. simply because 504 and IEPs bring with them frameworks just from federal and state regulations. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of that already built into those. Yeah. So it's just maintaining that and understanding that a little bit better. Um, I don't I, I don't want to say it's not a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. But I think over the next year especially, we'll really be able to get some things together so we're all using the same, like I was saying here, the yeah. same cutoff. Yeah. So what are those points that we're going to use and what information are we going to use to make that decision? 
Um, and then how do we determine it? what the length of intervention and things like that. Some of those may vary simply because, you know, a kindergartner may need more time. Yeah. Or, you know, or depending on what the gap is or what the intervention needs to be. Yep. Um, but really just talking about, if, I feel like if we can nail those things, the details within that just come. Yeah. So I don't want to say the work becomes easier. It's never easier. But I think it's easier than to define. And I think that's the piece that I was missing coming in is that it wasn't clearly defined to me because I went to one building. Yep. It was it was one way. And another building was fairly similar, but there were shifts that I didn't different. know about until I knew about them. Yep. And it, it's more about just defining them and communicating them out. And I think over the course of this year, we'll really be able to iron out a lot of those things. We're already starting to make some, some of the shifts to the 504 plans. Yep. Um, and, and 504 versus IEP, we're not taking kids off IEPs. <laughs> yep. I just want to make sure that, like when we're having conversations and they're only receiving accommodations or related services, that's a 504 plan. And that's yep. okay. Yep. And let's, let's just talk about those things and then define them. Yep. And then clearly define them. And it's not about changing anything. We're not changing anything. Yep. Um, it's just defining them more clearly and then using them consistently across buildings. Awesome. Yeah, that was it. Thank you, Mandy. I think for me, uh, one of the greatest things in your thing was when you talked about the risk of um, suicide screenings and how you have a group of people who are, I'm sorry, I, I'm not used to this. Uh, so uh, for me, for your report, I was really happy to see that you had discussed uh, um, about the procedure of the suicide screeners and how you have a group of people who are talking and you're making it all across the community, parents, teachers, and, and just really, especially during a time like right now, it's so important with the mental health of all students. I was just really happy to hear that, that it's an ongoing conversation, continue to monitor it and having that open dialogue with parents, especially, is something that's very important. I just want to say it was really great to hear that and I just continue that, hope that continues moving forward nonstop because mental health is a very serious concern for all. So thank you so much. Don't install all my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, man. You've done a wonderful job in this first year. I'm glad to be in person. This is my yeah. very first board meeting in person. Yeah, because we, we met Mandy like in July, I want to say August. That's the groundbreaking, yeah, but nobody knows me. Right. Because I've only seen you on computer screen. Over Zoom. Yeah. It's all right. Norm stole all my thunder, so. <laughs> Sorry. It was an entire Zoom based process. It was. All the interviews as well as the board. That was yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think our first phone call while I was on vacation was over the phone. Right. With the intent that it would be in person and then everything shut yeah. down and then and our third uh, out of four tonight, um, Michelle does regular reports right, every month and she has a supplemental, but um, I really appreciate she put some reflections in just about where she is in the global and among everything else. So uh, Michelle, thank you very much for submitting your reflections. Turn it over to you. Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, you know, I'm just short, sweet, to the point. That's, uh, that's what I try to do. <laughs> and, and I guess it's probably because I try to be as efficient as possible as I can in my job. So it is a little different of a format than the others, um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Okay. I just want to say thank you. Honestly, I mean, we meet every week. We do, you know, for the building project. And Michelle has been so busy in this project, and along with other things she does for the school district. I just a huge thank you for being on the penny on everything and making the project successful. Without you and Steve, we wouldn't be where we are, where we are with a transparent communication to this community on how we're doing it. It's just, it's really great to work with you. Thank you. No, they'll see. Um, no, I, I mean, I think the biggest thing will be that I would hope that what you said about as time goes on, that there is more clarity about the federal grants and um, that it will take up less time. Because I know that there's a lot of uncertainty as these programs get implemented. And so thanks for constantly talking to state administrators so that you can get the question answered. I think it's a lot and we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have the same, a, a similar remark. You know, your job is already a full-time job and then adding on huge federal grants is no joke, especially with all that they require. So thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. All right. You. Sure, the last, uh, the last report, and I just provided a little bit of historical context. So this was uh, Larry Donahue who asked for this form. Because before it was general, really, you know, as a principal, I would just provide information. But Larry really wanted to know um, what were the concerns were, you know, what the priorities were, and what were the current work. And I really like that format. I, I like doing board reports. It provides me an opportunity to reflect. 
this time a little bit longer than the current year. It's a little bit of work in, in my 12 years as soup. Um, but it really was a pleasure to, to spend some time reflecting over the, the long weekend and trying to discern, you know, what were the three, three, and three, with a little bit of uh, <laughs> runners up as work. But I appreciated the opportunity and certainly answer any questions. Great. All right, questions, comments? No, I mean, I think that the, I would just support, um, I think that you have a team, like you said, that works extraordinarily hard and is very dedicated to this district and to the students. And um, as we have seen from Mandy's report, that people are sort of looking forward to a break this summer. Um, having people be able to take the time they need to recharge and establish a good work-life balance is really important. So I think that's important for calling out. Um, and yeah, that, that's really it. I think it's great. I thought you did a nice job, Steve, across the board of being, portraying things as they are yeah. and how they might be. Um, so, you know, you, you've seen a lot of different positions here uh, in, in the school district. So all of that culminates to getting a, a nice sense of what's going on. And I think we may have had that conversation 12 and a half years ago. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, my honor. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Can I say one more thing? The last thing is that it's like also I feel like classically, Steve, that you included runners up for everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is amazing because it's also things to keep an eye on for for all of us as we think about the next year and beyond. So I appreciate the reflection there. Sure. Uh, and a little bit of historical record, a little bit okay. of stuff. And um, you know, there's, I'll be honest, there's the stuff I've been extraordinarily proud of. Yeah. The social justice work, the restorative justice work, the, the mindfulness work, some stuff. There, you know, I'll be honest, there's some stuff I look back on, wow, we did some, you know, the last 18 months have been so difficult that even leadership team today said, you know, we did some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the last 18 months has been so hard. Um, but, you know, if you take a look at the, the entire body of work of, of the leadership team together, well, there's, some, there's some really cool stuff. Yeah. We, like, Rob, you remember Art for the Sky? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some cool, we just did some cool stuff. Yeah. We talked about Art for the Sky today as a leadership. Bird, right? Yeah, and we yeah. did it, you know, and, and it's just a lot of fun. So, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. So I'm reading the report. I had no questions. And then I got to the end where you said, take good care. I, mean, I didn't like that. Because to me, it was like, where's it going? And, and it, it sunk in. But to me, it's still like, we still have another month to go. We do. And it, but I didn't like to take good care. Because it, 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 it was something I wasn't used to, and it's something yeah. that it, it was, but it, it was a great report. No, and I truly, I truly hope that you and, and this community it was just, takes good care. It just, it was, it struck me in the heart of, of care, and it was great. Well, I, th I thought it was a really great kind of retrospective on things that have gone well. It was really neat to see kind of what you were talking about, some really good stuff that we've done um, over the years. And we've gotten the chance to work together only in the most difficult <laughs> <laughs> year. So, um, but I also think that some of the things that we will all keep uh, an eye on, such as school funding and um, the work life balance, I mean, this year has just burned people. It's been hard for everyone. Um, and then just general support for public education, because I, I agree, I would not have come on to a public school board if I did not believe deeply in public school education. Um, and I just, I, I think that you were right on with that. And I think that it is our responsibility to continue to um, uphold, uphold public education because it is truly for the public. So thank you. My pleasure. All right, I gotta go back to the agenda. Yeah. So uh, up next, I'm just going for more discussion. And I think I put my board report that I hope the operating already in the pandemic doesn't exist. But um, so just where we are, uh, update on cases in the school. As of my discussion with the nurses at our local school, we had no students or staff impacted. We have one student at Maple Street School who is in quarantine due to exposure. And at the middle and high schools, no staff or student impacted. That's where we are. So one student throughout the district right now. Right. And, and so I'm going to turn it over to Andy real quick. But we, um, we were spending, we spent some time taking a look at masks for outdoors. So um, at Maple Street and the high school where we felt, the middle high school, we felt very confident in the social distancing that went outside and masks didn't come on. But we had talked about a couple of times at this meeting and working with the nurses that at the time, 
that because of the littles, it's very difficult to social distance. The, the staff, nurses, the staff that felt that the continued mask wearing was appropriate. Um, the bill, Dean required to notify Bill that um, Dr. Chan changed the guidance. And so, um, thank you again. I'll give turn over to Andrew, but Andrew worked through the process when we're looking at the MOA. And um, Bill started the implementation strategy to try to support parent choice, uh, but trying to make a revision in the MOA. So, Andrew, thank you for your immediate attention to this. It's important for the community. Yeah, so, um, as basically as Steve said uh, earlier today, we found out that Dr. Chan changed the recommendation, um, saying that basically outdoors. Um, again, this is not indoors, but for outdoors for children, that they can be mask-free. Um, I was able to um, be in contact with both uh, leadership from the HDA and from HES, our two unions, um, and was able to give this information to them, as well as letting them know that, as Steve mentioned, the nurse supported it, and then um, we had um, union reps basically in the schools also supporting this change. The only change in the MOA um, will end up being we're going to be going from we are requiring masks when outdoors to recommending masks when outdoors. Um, the, the biggest issue, so this has not really been an issue at our middle high school or at Maple Street School um, because kids are old enough and they've been able to keep physically distanced when they are mask free. Um, however, at Harold Martin School, we understand they are small children, they will probably not be able to remain um, physically distanced at all times. Um, however, sort of looking at the risk and looking at the current recommendations, um, everyone was in agreement that they were coming. Um, but with, you know, two, a little over two weeks of school left to go and warmer weather, I think that this will be a welcome reprieve for kids. Yep. Bill is working on um, just when the kids have a mask, what they do with it, is it a yeah. baggie, is it a pocket? and also making sure that if parents, for, for the real littles, we want if the parents would prefer that the youngster continue with the mask at recess, we will we'll certainly support that and we'll make them. So Bill's collecting that information as well as how we manage the mask for the littles. Yeah. Um, but for uh, starting, to, I believe starting tomorrow, um, people outside, if they would like to be without a mask on, they're on March yeah. mm -hmm. um, And I should also mention that the classes, I did receive confirmation that classes remain cohorted even when outside for recess. So we do not have classes mixing. Um, for lunch or recess, so that that cohorting is still happening. Good, great, Good, great. All right, thank you. And the, the last piece, I don't know if it was a late addition to the packet. It was the decision-making matrix, and um, we're at 4.6 cases per uh, uh, seven-day average per hundred thousand, which puts us at just community spread between one and nine, which is yellow. Um, it's the lowest it's been in a long time. That was also one of the reasons why the nurses felt so strongly community spread was so low that they felt it was um, a, a good solution overall. So that's where we are. Now, um, one of the, as you look at the decision-making matrix, there is a line there about what about if we have high temps. Mm -hmm. And so the leadership team has spent some time today just taking a look at, um, uh, you know, we had, you have some, um, you know, looking at uh, early next week, um, some, some high temps. So a couple of the strategies, we're looking at increasing airflow uh, 24 hours a day in yeah. the schools to make sure that we can start the day as cool as possible. We are um, availing ourselves of all cool spaces if there's a, you know, to, they can move uh, classes as much as possible. We also have four outdoor areas that we've developed through what we just talked about, the ESSER funds at the public hearing. That's a little bit difficult because we have kids remote mm -hmm. and going outside is, is always as seamless, but we can move to the library, maybe the auditorium is open. Um, and we also, um, Chris and Rebecca, but if, if families, you know, if there's kids that are very, very successful to eat, they could, they could stay remote. Yeah. Right? There is synchronous learning going on, so if, if they make a choice that, you know, fourth floor, um, you know, even if they wanted to get dismissed at lunch, go home and do the last two classes when it's hot, that that's um, easily implementable because we are synchronous for the, I don't know if I'm making, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. increased airflow, it is moving when possible, offering the um, remote option to, to families who think you know they're very concerned, and move to spaces, move to spaces inside or outside as much as possible. Yep. That's our strategies um, for the. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I think that's everything. So next we have an update from uh, the cap uh, the capital improvement plan committee. All right. So, 
Ms. Lapoma, I'm turning it's it over to you. One of the most exciting committees, if not the most exciting committee. Um, so just so everyone knows, our capital improvement plan uh, on town warrants or our school warrants is called the maintenance trust, but it's the same, it's the same thing, just so everyone knows that. Um, Rob and I have the good fortune of being on both the CIP and the financial committee, which I think means that as we're thinking about both our short-term priorities and our long-term priorities, we can think about these things happening in tandem, which is great. Um, and just so everyone knows, the CIP um, involves a long-term planning and visibility into our buildings and their maintenance. Um, there's a document online that I think everyone can access that provides a ton of information about each of our buildings, um, like I think a 10-year forecast of the, the maintenance that is expected um, and that we can forecast and what the projected cost is and that what, what that amounts to and sort of what we need to be able to support that if we're looking at it coming out of a trust account. Um, one of the things we talked about was really about getting up to parity. So this year we are contributing 150K um, coming out of the, um, the school meeting. After our expenditures, we'll be down to 116K. It is worth noting that based off of recommendations, um, that if we were really living up to our recommended capital renewal, renewal plan, uh, we would be somewhere making contributions of somewhere between 700K and 950K a year. So, Obviously, New Hampshire is in a different bucket, which is something that we talked about. Um, we don't get a lot of contribution from the state. It is very hard for any town in New Hampshire to finance that level of contribution. And so we, what we really talked about was trying to figure out how can we make the right level of contributions that get us to a point where we can be doing proactive planning around our buildings. This will be a long process going into the fall budget planning cycle. Um, the last thing that I think we talked about was um, I live my life in spreadsheets for the most part, so I'll be doing a little bit of work um, to supplement Michelle, hopefully, um, just to, to do a little bit for the layman visibility into it. Um, so I think it was a great start, and yeah, thrilled. Excellent. Awesome. The only thing that I, thank you, Dulce, we, we moved from a 3% to a 2% because of all the work in the last five years. Yep. Um, as an estimate, so the number that Dulce used is actually down from where it was before the performance contract and before all the um, the facility project, so I think that's a great accomplishment. And a little thing, but I have to do it because Norm's here. On the CIP now is a roof map, of yep. the legend. Yes. Every yes. roof. Yes, you said it. You know, when, it was, when it was last redone, when is it projected to be redone as a link? So I had to do it, Norm. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> I, I that. So um, there's just, where, we, you know, where Michelle and, and, and Noah have taken this um, to where we are now, it's been a great journey. And uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Any questions for Dulcie? No? I'm excited for the work you guys are going to do. Really, CIP is an amazing thing to do. Yeah. Really important. Awesome. All right, thank you. Um, next up, Hopkins Finance Committee. Yeah, Michelle, you're up. Okay, so we're going to go over some numbers. We'll try to make this all. So essentially, we were talking about the fund balance uh, as it's expected and where those resources are going to go, both designated and undesignated. So I'm just going to walk through. Uh, the math. So right now the projection is 1,012,000 in fund balance, or if you like the term, operating surplus. And for people who are curious, you know, how did that come about? When the audit is done, that information is in the audit, down to the dime, where these funds came from. So I think last year, you know, when you look through that, page 70 comes to mind, but there is a page on the audit that you can see where fund balance is derived from. So in last year's budget process to get us where we needed to go in understanding where we were at, we designated $542,000 to offset taxes. That was in the budget. Um, and then we designated another $125,000 towards two Warren articles. Um, one was the maintenance trust, which goes predominantly towards capital improvements for $100,000. And then another $25,000 to go into the technology trust so that we were building that pool of funds to replace those Chromebooks that are now in the one-to-one -one ratio. So if my math is correct, you subtract those two things from our original 1,012,000 number, and you're at 340,000, and that becomes the undesignated fund balance. This is where we have some choices as to what we can do with that money. Now, the first thing that we thought was really important was to refill Article 10. And essentially what Article 10 is, is something that was created by the Hopkins school board and district a number of years ago to be used for tax reduction, but in its latest uh, iteration, it can also be used for an emergency use. Um, 
and that it, the logs, the thing that we passed was that you could use up to 5% of budget. So the cap on our Article 10, if it was completely filled, would be $788,000. If we backfill the 250 that we took out this year, then we would be up to 394000 That leaves us with now an undesignated balance of $90,000. Um, and then we talked about things that need to get done pretty much right away. Uh, so that list includes uh, the e-finance software programming uh, for the, the business department, uh, the fence that no longer exists here at Maple Street School uh, needs to be replaced, as well as the fence on the other side, and that's $6,000. Furnishings in parts of the building project uh, for $25,000, so just a little bit there. So when some of the additions were made, the forecast for the cost of the addition was complete, but not necessarily complete to the furnishings. So we can't have this great space and then not fill. So this money would be used to fill that space and keep us on budget in the building project as well. Um, related to that is the old engineering room at the high school will be becoming a physics engineering lab. And those are desktops that are uh, Matt knows better than I, but they're a little bit dated and they are really designed for project lead the way. So to fill that lab with laptops, I'm assuming, that work both for physics so that they can be mobile and for project lead the way is the goal of, you know, that would be $40,000. So that, that's 80, $83,000 in the, the undesignated 90, which leaves us with about $7,000 to talk about for smaller items. Um, as we move forward at our next board meeting, we'll get more refined and then final decisions will be made just before the 30th by the board in terms of how the money will be spent. Um, and, and that number is likely to change. Uh, as POs get closed out, Michelle has a better understanding of exactly where we are. So then we may have more options moving forward. Uh, and I think that you know one of the recommendations that we talked about as a group was that beyond this 90,000 now, any additional money beyond that really should be going into Article 10. So the undesignated fund balance, or the designated fund balance at 542,000 get pretty hot. So it's going to be hard to meet that year over year. So if we can bring that number down by taking some money out of Article 10 moving forward. That puts us in a better position when we're trying to budget next year. So that's what we're talking about. Um, we'll have a, a more detailed numbers in front of you for next time uh, as we get get some harder numbers coming. Questions? Adam, I'm, you miss me? No, this is great. You were like right on cue. I'm doing the countdown here. I'm auditing you literally, like on your numbers. You did a really good job. I can do math, man. Yeah, you. Yeah. Robin, you did you know perfect summary. Look forward to working with Michelle over the next week and a half of the fifteenth, and uh, having a recommendation. Also checking in with absolutely checking with Mike, and doing all that stuff. So I think we'll be in great shape for the fifteenth. So thank you, um, Michelle. All of it was back to back meetings, and I think they're already up. I do. I think uh, the sound is already up. If people want to listen to those meetings, yeah, they really should. Excellent. All right. Any and we are on to the Hopkin Building Committee. Awesome. So before I begin, uh, we had a meeting this um, Tuesday, and it was uh, a great meeting. We had an opportunity to reflect a little bit on Steve's work on the building project. We, we missed out on some cake, Rob. It was um, absolutely delicious. We all, we all had some cake. We sat around. We talked about, you know, what drove this project, Steve's coming to the district, and it was a great time to reflect. And uh, it was supposed to be a half an hour meeting. Steve made it 45 minutes. So it was... He was really passionate about what he did, and, and it really was a great moment. But the, probably the most important thing that we talked about at the meeting was the FFP um, that, that we discussed a lot. Michelle has issued um, POs for $16,259.68 over, over um, the budget for FFP, so that's really important. Reflected what you said, Rob. Did you tell people what FFP means? Yes, furniture, right, furniture fixtures, and equipment. So that would move owner's contingency down to 27,000 going into the major part of the project, the science lab. As Rob spoke, moving 25,000 from the fund balance into FFE would give us some breathing room on the owner's contingency. 
Additional priorities, of course, is um, Harold Martin's library flooring and most important to me is expanded parking. Um, we are looking at more efficient parking as well. Um, one thing that's important for us to understand is that we do have available funds for this project to look at these additional um, avenues as discussed. Um, construction contingency, interest that the town voted yes on, which is great. Rebate on energy savings, the fund balance, more may be available um, prior to July 1st, and the maintenance trust. I, um, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear uh, you know, a side comment and appreciation to the recommendation for the Finance Committee on helping with the 25000 for the FFE. Um, you know, you, you, were re you were right, Rob. Um, when we did these adults for these projects, it wasn't necessarily calculated on the empty space for the school district. It just wasn't there. So we, this was a time for the, the time for us to buy this stuff because of the way it was bidded out at a lower cost for this district. If it's later, it's going to be more. I, I do optimistically hope that this board can commit to that parking over at uh, Harold Martin. I think that's very important um, that we find that. And I'm hoping we do get that in the part of uh, the number of resources that I mentioned, but also floor it at the library. I think that's something that's very important to happen. But um, we had a good, robust discussion about that. But um, definitely keep my eyes on those other opportunities. I'm excited to see what happens on July 15th. We receive owner's contingency back from construction. From construction. So July 15th, we'll have a, a, a number um, and we can discuss. And I think Michelle, is, you're doing a little bit of work of kind of for parking, getting not quotes, but more, is it quotes you get? Well, for the, um, so there's two approaches to parking. One is, is just by more efficient use of space, yep. relining and removing of a tree in a little mm -hmm. bit. And we think we can get about 17 spaces there. And we think that could be around a $5,000 hit for 17 spaces, which is a great bargain. So that's being priced out right now. Yep. Uh, and also, we are we have in a, a, a cost towards expansion, which would be you know a, taking you know some more space of about 17 spaces. So uh, I agree with you, Norm. Uh, parking, I've, I've seen it on, on too many of those wonderful parent events. Yeah. Where, uh, parking it goes all the way out, and it's, it's not as safe. So we have some work to do there, but I think there's some opportunity, and I think the construction contingency will be released mid July, and there's hopefully there's enough there for some parking. I mean, some carpet, some parking. And the last thing is, I, I'll always say this, we are on time and we are still on budget. So that's the most important thing to say, considering we're in a uh, pandemic, and, you know, we are still on budget and on time. That's it. Great. Questions for Barb? No? No? It's exciting. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. All right, school board business schedule. So, um... We're, we're winding down. Right now we have one um, one school board meeting scheduled left, which we'll, do, we'll look at fund balance. We'll have more personnel. We'll uh, talk to the leadership team about doing a, a significant review of Schedule B. I want to make sure those are all nominated before um, the last meeting. But I also would like the board to start thinking about the summer schedule. So this is the time where we start, and the different approaches that boards have taken. So um, some were simply called as needed um, you know, when there's a hiring that needs to be done, the, su the superintendent would reach out to the board and say, can you meet? And post it for meeting. And then some, like last summer, as we remember, uh, we met every week. So that's another option. <laughs> and, and the other is a regular schedule option, um, you know, where you go first and third in July, first and third in August. Um, I appreciate in, in the notice of work-life balance. Um, we also have to start thinking about it would be great for the staff is if we could settle in on a location so we didn't have to take up take down among ESY and uh, extended school year and all the construction. Mm -hmm. So just think about um, most summers, to be honest with you, what, well, many summers, the, the meetings were in the morning um, just because you know, nights and, 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 and that's a big commitment for families and things. So uh, all those things are just different past practices, but as you start thinking to make sure that, whether it's Mike and the leadership team, and Michelle has notice about what kind of schedule you're predicting so they can start planning. Um, one summer, um, we didn't meet the month of July when I was superintendent. Uh, it wasn't a big hiring summer, and it wasn't, and that was glorious. Um, but so all, just, I wanted, well, I put this agenda item to make sure we were all set on the schedule on 
because we've got the graduation, you've got the board retreat on the 18th, we've got the meeting on the 15th, which is out of sequence, but also trying to get the board to think about, so you can come back at the next meeting or soon, determine the summer schedule. Is it going to be mornings? Is it going to be regular? Is it going to be as needed? Is it going to be nights? Yeah. And then a, a location for board meetings. So if there's any way to leave some of this stuff set up to relieve pressure on the tech staff, because as Angie uh, said, there, there's a lot of work for tech staff. That's all. That was it. Yeah. That was it. So. What areas are used mostly during the summer for the school year program? Um, like, is there, I guess, a better way of putting it, is there an area that would be ideal for us to be able to use? If we could, um, if, if we could designate a classroom, um, you know, like the first, one summer, right, we were in the first classroom as you walked in at MSS, if we could talk with Amy about designating a classroom, because that's walkable. You know, no one's going to walk out for the stuff. If we could do one classroom, that would be great. Um, some, you know, in the past, one of the, it's going back to history. So before I became Rob knows this, before I became superintendent, all the board meetings were in the conference room. And then we had civics, and I actually, as superintendent, moved them here and then classrooms because the conference room didn't work. Summer, though, conference room, it, you know, it, it, it can work because it's you know, usually not tremendously well attended. So, but I think if we could have a fixed classroom, and we've done that before room one, and Matt and I and Amy can look at that, but to secure a classroom for you, set it up, leave it, lock it, come in, boom. That would be helpful. Matt, does that make sense to you? So just think about it. That was the goal of that. Super. Good. Yeah. All right. So rolling right along, we've got some personnel. Sure. So one of the um, one of the one of the approaches we took um, was with our we you know when we nominated like a, we weren't sure what kind of curriculum work was going to be done whether we were hybrid when we were all out. So we just did an initial contract of work and then we, we had a map keep hours, you know, at the tally and then some submitted and very, very pleased with what Bill and Matt have done. The curriculum council meetings have been very robust, uh, doing a lot of the social justice, uh, cultural responsive work, which has been great. Um, one of the things that Matt and Bill has instituted this year is a review of our core beliefs and values. It used to be a glossary. So every month we, like this month, we spent about 20 minutes talking about what it means to be competent. And they also coordinated about um, 37 staff and 14 projects doing some curriculum work. Because remember, we couldn't do it last summer. Because it would. Why couldn't we do it last summer? We have a budget. So, um, so we, 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 that spring that was coordinated. So it, it just under uh, $1,200. Um, would revise the contract, and this is still well within what was budgeted, so this wasn't like we used it all up and just this was um, monitored and approved by Bill, and so we just we do a revised contract like we've done and to make sure we're transparent. So um, it would be a revised contract of $1,200, and I appreciate the work that Bill and Matt's done. And then the next piece, everybody okay? Questions? Everybody all right? The next piece is um, the Tyler Campbell. Is has um, resigned um, from. Uh, he's going back to school. He's over at Harold Martin School Custodian. Um, the end date, right? I think I wrote a board note. So he's going to do. Right, Michelle's doing some part-time work for us, um, but the full-time position uh, has already been posted. I think. Anticipated. Now it, Yep. And now it's going outside. Now it's going internal first. But he will. It's not a definitive end of experience because he's going to help us out and do some part-time. I think right till the end of the school year, mm -hmm. if or something like that. So, but um, glad that Todd was with us. Glad he's heading back to school. And uh, we have a position. Great, right? Great. Good. All right. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. uh, now we're moving on to 21-22. Um, very pleased to bring forward a special education teacher with a behavior focus. Now why it's titled that way is a behavior specialist is a very specific certification. And so we posted for either a, right, and a special education teacher behavior focus, which is this uh, is a special education teacher with lots of experience working in behavior but does not carry the credential of a behavior specialist, and we try to be transparent in what we're doing. Um, and has experience working in schools, experience working for one of our consulting firms that we work with all the time. And if anybody noticed, it's Mr. Rogers is going to be our <laughs> behavior person. So I'm very pleased to bring uh, Mr. Rogers on board. Not the Mr. Uh, Mr. Rogers, Rogers, but it's uh, Mr. Rogers, who sure. will be just as awesome. Mm -hmm. 
And up next, this is the meeting that we um, formalized the ESY Extended School Year Summer Slate. Great to have Mandy here if you have any questions. Mandy spends a lot of time staffing in. If she wants to put a plug out, right, Mandy? We need some people. Staff. Um, yeah, people want a much deserved and, and I totally get it. We are we are short um, a teacher uh, at Carol Martin and then some one on one IA as well. Um, so it's very easy to use these Any questions about the SY flight? And uh, the hope is, and that's uh, one of the things uh, why I hesitated, Andrew, when you talked about the, the space, the hope is that we'll be able to use some of the uh, addition at Harold Martin School for ESY, uh, which is really exciting. It's really nice. Uh, uh, Chief Yale has given us occupation permit or uh, plans to even without the sprinkler, which makes sense. I've never been sprinkling, so it's not going worse. So I'm just very excited about that. And the last piece um, is the Hopkins School District speech to talk to pathologist. I can use this. Um, I'm not sure, and Michelle, maybe you can help me. We might not have been able to fill this for three years. Correct. So this is a covered position by the collective bargaining agreement that we've tried to fill over the last three years, but a speech, it's, it's very rare. I mean, it's a high demand uh, profession. Very pleased, very pleased to bring Laura Bailey forward um, as the nominee. Um, otherwise, it's contracted service, and we do work with the, we work with the HEA, um, and very transparent with them, but very pleased to, to bring a nominee forward that I think for the first time in three years. Having a salary person, you get significant more, um, you know, than a contract person. We're really excited. Great. Okay. Okay. Keep rolling. So financial. The last two, and honestly, the most exciting. I'm the very excited agenda anyway, but um, very, very excited to have authorization to sign the last bond application. Um, you know, when a couple of women were struggling, right, with the budget and what, how we were going to do it. We converted, remember at one point, Michelle, we were going to do the whole bond, and then the board voted to stagger the bond, and there was concerns, right? There's obviously risk on interest rate, but there's also risk on whether or not we will have to bridge it, right? If, if we ran out of funds, and Michelle can speak to it when she gets to the financial, but it does look like, it, well, no, I think it, we're assured now, right, Michelle, at this point, that we will not need a bond anticipate, we will need a bridge loan, which is great. Um, you know, uh, after July 1, Michelle has, has, has guaranteed that she texts me once the interest I'm always interested in the interest rate. And I think we budgeted it, I don't know, three or four, but it's going to come in a lot less. So it's exciting times, and um, we're going to get the loan agreement signed and get it over to the Bond Bank Council, and we'll be all set for the sale mid-July, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting, and this would complete, this is the last piece of the project. I think if you, uh, it's about 4.8 million, 9 million, something like that? Yeah, just under 4.8, yeah. Just under 4.8 million. So uh, you authorize Jim to sign away, <laughs> so it's good stuff. Do you have an idea of what the rate will be based on market conditions? We don't. Okay. It's got to do with the sector of the individuals that are compiled of the sale, too. Yeah. So the, the uh, information out there that I hear is it should be very similar to what yeah. we had the last time. Great. And it was neat before, right? That they sold it at a five percent. They got a. It was a very strange. Yeah, they sold it at a five percent yeah, coupon, and then they gave us a rebate back, and so it was kind of. Yeah, yeah. it was very interesting. It's someone, yeah, it's just very interesting stuff. So we'll monitor it. You'll get a report back, but um, it's due in a couple weeks. So by authorizing this tonight, we need Dave McKenzie, um, Laura, our treasurer's got to sign, and Jim. And we'll, we'll start that Monday, probably. Mm -hmm. All the signing is on. Okay. Cool. Supplemental financial. And Rob spoke to this uh, in, in preparation for the finance meeting. Michelle put together an interim financial. This is see where we're in the fund balance. And the fund balance is one. Go ahead, uh, Michelle, you want to take it? Yeah, no, uh, no. Uh, you're fine. Uh, a little, you know, it's one million twelve thousand four eighty one thirteen. Um, and as Rob said, um, you know, as time goes on, since when I did it at that snapshot, POs are being closed. Um, and so uh, there will be another financial for the 15th board meeting. Can you and on that the number one more time? Sure. One million twelve thousand four hundred eighty-one dollars and thirteen cents. Okay. And on the bond, as of the um, end, well, 
May 24th to be specific. It was uh, just under $4 million that we spent on the bond um, of the $5 million. Um, and so um, since then we have made um, another month's payment for BPS. So it brings us closer to like four, not quite four and a half million dollars, but in essence, probably between now and June 30 will probably be around four and a half million, yeah. a little bit more. Um, but then we get our money um, beginning of August deposited. So uh, we'll be fine. So it's, it's you know, Michelle would, um, you know, on your bill this but this is, this is just natural for her, but all this work about managing the finance, making sure we're liquid, making sure we have enough on hand means we didn't have the expense with the bond anticipation no, and we didn't have the work of a bond anticipated no. So both of those things yeah. are huge for this office. So Michelle, thank you for your stewardship. Um, very, very pleased that we're going to be able to initiate the last bond portion without any of those ancillary work or expenses and looking forward to a low rate. I think, I thought it was 0 0.80 what we had for the project. Uh, it was low. Yeah, it was very low. And it's exciting. And, and so for the last rate? Stuff. What we have, 80 cents in the tax rate right now. Right. I mean, 80 uh, cents is right now. And when, when we advertised this in the March of 2019, the tax impact we, we're, the, the project is a significantly big arrangement. It did the fourth classroom. It did the uh, fire suppression. We're going to have the library redesign here. We're going to have uh, you know, a whole bunch of really, lots of things done. And it's going to be less than projected tax impact because of the rain. More for less. It's not a bad thing, everybody. If this board did not go through with the facilities project, 12 percent increase. No, 13 13 percent increase on this project. Yeah. Thir so a year difference. What what Barrett's seeing is yeah. BPS is that due to the pandemic, a 13 percent increase in cost that we missed because we were actually bidding when work was low. Yeah. Right. So people worried about grabbing any work they could because they wanted to keep busy in the in that shallow time. So it would have been 13 percent less work done. Yeah. We would not have gotten it. So no, the, no, we caught some things in a, a lightning in a bottle here. So it's good stuff. That's great. All right, I think that's it. So this brings us to our second public comment portion of the evening. So if there's any public comment, if you want to come up and just be sure to include your name and address. No. All right. I will close that and then we are moving on to action items although before I get there just to note um, our next board meeting is going to be a little out of sequence normally it is on a Thursday as we are here um, but that week is super busy and we have a senior barbecue to be at on the June 17th so the next board meeting will be on Tuesday June 15th in this location live and in person awesome is it a Tuesday? Mm -hmm. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Matt and I were talking about Wednesday. I thought we were oh. No, it's right. all good. You're perfect. Thank you. I, I, I apologize. It's a Tuesday. It is. You're great. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't want to go back to back to back. Correct. Yeah, that'd be a lot. All right. So, is there anything else? Any other, before I get on to action items, any other business, anything else you would like to bring up? Will we covered? Will you be at the, the last board meeting? Probably. Okay, so we can salute you then, saying thank you. Sure. All right, all right. just want to make sure that we're giving you enough time. Right. So, take a picture. Awesome. All right, so moving on to action items. Um, is there a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to accept the superintendent's recommendation to issue a revised contract for Matt Krogman, curriculum specialist for the 2020 2021 school year, as presented? So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Is there so a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the superintendent's recommendation to accept Harold Martin School custodian Tyler Campbell's resignation date determined by the superintendent of schools? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Is that it? Um, is there a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the superintendent's nomination of Eric Rogers, Mr. Rogers? Hopkinton Middle Height and High School Special Educator Behavior Focused for the 2021-2022 school year, pending final approval of the Superintendent of Schools. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. 
Is there a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to accept the superintendent's recommendation to authorize school board chair Jim O'Brien, who's not even here tonight, <laughs> to sign the loan agreement between the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank and the Hopkinton School District for the July 2021 bond sale? Good luck, Jim. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Is, that? is there? A motion for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the superintendent's nomination of the 2021 extended school year ESY slate as presented. So moved. Second. Uh, oh, I have not been asking. Are there any comments? Any questions? No. Okay. I'd assume if there were any, you would have spoken up. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ayes have it. Is there a recommendation for the Hopkinton School Board to approve the superintendent's nomination of Laura Bailey, speech pathologist, Hopkinton School District for the 2021-2022 school year, pending final approval of the superintendent of schools? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. And then prior to this meeting, we did have a um, special or a... Uh, public hearing on the ESSER two funds that have already um, been recommended. So do we have a recommendation for the Hopkins School Board to approve the superintendent's recommendation to accept the unanticipated federal funds ESSER two and expend them as presented? So moved. Second. Any comments? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's it. Um, we do have a uh, need for a non-public session this evening, um, so we do need a motion for to go into non-public for the discussion of matters as per RSA 91-A colon 3 comma 2 little a for personnel. Motion. So, so moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Yeah. The, oh yes, this is a roll call vote. Thank so you, Norm. is a yes. Robin, you know, yes. Delta yes. Andrea Folsom is yes. And with that, you're adjourned. Excellent job. Thank you. Not bad. Good job. Great job. Time is perfect. I will see you guys for a few minutes. Great.